विद द ब्लेसिंग ऑफ श्री शिरडी साई बाबा साई सचरिता चैप्टर सेवन वंडरफुल इनकारनेशन बिहेवियर ऑफ साई बाबा हिज योगिक प्रैक्टिस हिज ऑल परवेजिवनेस एंड मर्सी लेपर डिवोटीज सर्विस मास्टर खपाडेज प्ले केस गोइंग टू पंधरपुर वंडरफुल इनकारनेशन साई बाबा न्यू ऑल योगिक प्रैक्टिस He was well versed in the six processes including dhauti stomach cleaning by a moistened piece of linen 3 inches in breadth and 22 and a half inches in length khanda yoga separating his limbs and joining them again and samadhi etc if you thought that he was a hindu he looked like a yavan if you thought him to be a yavan he looked like a pious hindu no one definitely knew whether he was a hindu or a mohammedan he celebrated the hindu festival of ram navmi with all due formalities and at the same time permitted the sandal procession of the mohammedans he encouraged wrestling bouts in this festival when the gokulashtami came he got the gopalkala ceremony duly performed and on each festivals he allowed the mohammedans to say their prayers namaz in his masjid Once during a Muharram festival some Mohammedans proposed to construct a tazia or tabut in the masjid keeping it there for some days and afterwards take it in a procession through the village Sai Baba allowed the keeping of the tabut for 4 days and on the 5th day got it removed from the masjid without the least compunction If we say that he was a Mohammedan his ears were pierced had holes according to Hindu custom If you think that he was a Hindu he advocated the practice of circumcision though according to Mr Nana Saheb Chandrorkar who observed him closely he was not himself circumcised wide article in Sai Leela on Baba Hindu ki Yavan by B V Dev page 562 If you call him Hindu he always lived in the masjid if Mohammedan he had always the duni sacred fire there and the following things which are contrary to the mohammedan religion that is grinding on the handmill blowing of the conch and bells oblation in the fire bhajan giving of food and worship of baba's feet by means of argya water were allowed there if you think that he was a mohammedan the best of brahmins and agnihotris leaving aside their orthodox ways fell prostrate at his feet Those who went to make enquiries about his caste were dumbfounded and were captured by his darshan so none could definitely decide whether sai baba was a hindu or a mohammedan this was no wonder for he who completely surrenders himself to the lord by getting rid of his egoism and body consciousness thus becomes one with him and has nothing to do with any questions of caste or nationality baba saw no difference between any two castes and even between beings he took meat and feet with sorry he took meat and fish with fakirs but did not grumble when dogs touched the dishes with their mouths such a unique and wonderful incarnation was sai baba on account of the merits in my past birth i had the good fortune to sit at his feet and enjoy his blessed company the joy and delight i derived therefrom was incomparable in fact sai baba was pure anand and consciousness i cannot sufficiently describe him his greatness and uniqueness he who took delight at his feet was established in his own self many sanyasis sadhakas and all sorts of men aspiring for salvation came to sai baba he always walked talked and laughed with them and always uttered alha malik god is the sole owner he never liked discussion or disputation he was always calm and controlled though irritable at times always preached vedanta and nobody knew till the last who was baba princes and poor people were treated alike by him he knew the inmost secrets of all and when he gave expression to them all were surprised he was the repository of all knowledge still he feigned ignorance he also disliked honor such were the characteristics of sai baba 
दो ही हैड अ ह्यूमन बॉडी हिज डीड्स टेस्टिफाइड टू हिज गॉडहुड ऑल पीपल कंसीडर्ड हिम एज गॉड इन शिरडी बिहेवियर ऑफ साई बाबा इग्नोरेंट दैट आई एम आई कैन नॉट डिस्क्राइब बाबाज मिराकल्स ही गॉट ऑलमोस्ट ऑल द टेम्पल्स इन शिरडी रिपेयर्ड थ्रू तात्या पाटिल द टेम्पल्स ऑफ शनि गणपति शंकर पार्वती विलेज डायटी एंड मारुति वेर पुट इन ऑर्डर हिज चैरिटी वॉज ऑल्सो रिमार्केबल द मनी ही यूज टू कलेक्ट एज दक्षिणा वॉज फ्रीली डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड रुपीज ट्वेंटी टू सम रुपीज फिफ्टीन और फिफ्टी टू अदर्स एवरी डे द रिसिपियंट्स थॉट दैट दिस वॉज प्योर चैरिटी मनी एंड बाबा विश दैट इट शुड बी यूजफुली एम्प्लॉयड पीपल बेनिफिटेड इमेंसली बाय हैविंग बाबा दर्शन सम बिकेम हेल एंड हार्टी विकेट पीपल वे टर्न इन टू गुड वंस लेप्रेसी वॉज क्योर्ड इन सम केसेस मेनी गॉट द डिजायर फुलफिल्ड विदाउट एनी मेडिसिन बींग पुट इन द आईज सम ब्लाइंड मैन गॉट बैक देर साइट एंड सम लेम वंस गॉट बैक देर लिम्स नोबडी कुड सी द एंड ऑफ हिज एक्स्ट्रॉर्डिनरी ग्रेटनेस His fame spread far and wide and pilgrims from all sides flocked to Shirdi. Baba had his asan near the dhuni and always rested there. He sat there in meditation sometimes without a bath. He used to tie a small white turban on his head and wear a clean dhotar round his waist and a shirt on his body. This was his attire in the beginning. He first practiced medicine in the village. He examined patients and gave medicines. He was always successful and he became famous as a hakim doctor. A curious case may be narrated here. One devotee had his eyes quite red and swollen. No doctor was available in Shirdi. The other devotees took him to Baba. In such cases, other doctors would use ointments, unguents, cow's milk and camphor drugs etc. Baba's remedy was quite unique. He pounded some biba, some carpus anacardium, marking nuts and made two balls of them and thrust them one in each eye of the patient and wrapped a cloth bandage round them. Next day the bandage was removed and water was poured over them. The inflammation subsided and the pupils became white and clear. Though the eyes are very delicate The biba caused no hurt but removed the disease of the eyes. Many such cases were cured. This is only one instance in this regard. Baba's yogic practices. Baba knew all the processes and practices of yoga. Two of them will be described here. Dauti kriya or cleansing process. Every third day, Baba went to the well near banyan tree at a considerable distance from the masjid. washed his mouth and had a bath on one occasion he was seen throwing up his intestines clean them inside outside and place them on a jam tree for drying there are people in shirdi who have actually seen this and who have testified to this fact ordinary dhoti is done by a moistened piece of linen 3 inches broad 22 and a half feet long This piece is gulped down the throat and allowed to remain in the stomach for about half an hour for being reacted there and then taken out but baba's dhoti was quite unique and extraordinary khanda yoga in this practice baba extracted the limbs from his body and left them separately at different places in the masjid once a gentleman went to the masjid and saw the limbs of baba lying in separate places He was terrified. He first thought of running to the village officers and informing them of Baba being hacked to pieces and murdered. He thought that perhaps he would be held responsible as he was the first informant and knew something of the affair. So he kept silent. But next day when he went to the masjid, he was very much surprised to see Baba hale and hearty as before. He thought that what he had seen the previous day was only a dream. Baba practiced yoga since his infancy and nobody knew or guessed the proficiency he had attained in it. 
he charged no fees for his cures became renowned and famous by virtue of his merits gave health to many a poor and suffering person this famous doctor of doctors cared not for his interests but always worked for the good and welfare of the others himself suffering unbearable and terrible pain many a time in the process one such instance i will relate now which will show the all pervasive and the most merciful character of sai baba baba's all pervasiveness and mercy in the year 1910 baba was sitting near the duni on diwali and warming himself he was putting firewood into the duni which was burning brightly a little later instead of pushing logs of wood baba pushed his arm into the duni his arm was scorched and burnt this was noticed by the errand boy mahadev and also by madhavrao deshpande shama they at once ran to baba and madhavrao clasped baba by his waist from behind and dragged him forcibly backward and asked deva why you done this then baba came to his senses and replied the wife of a blacksmith at some distant place was working the bellows of a furnace Her husband called her forgetting that her child was on her lap she got up hastily and the child slipped into the furnace i immediately thrust my hand into the furnace and saved the child i do not mind my arm being burnt but i am glad that the life of the child is saved leper devotee service on hearing the news of baba's hand being burnt from shyama madhavrao deshpande mr nana sahib chandrorkar accompanied by the famous doctor parmanand of mumbai with his medical outfit consisting of ointments lint and bandages etc rushed to shirdi and requested baba to allow doctor parmanand to examine the arm and dress the wound caused by the burn this was refused ever since the burnt arm was dressed by bagoji shinde a leper devotee his treatment consisted in massaging the burnt part with ghee and then placing a leaf over it and bandaging it tightly mr nana sahib chandrorkar solicited baba many a time to unfasten the bandages get the wound examined dressed and treated by dr parmanand with the object that it may heal fast dr parmanand himself made similar requests but baba postponed it by saying that allah was his doctor and did not allow his arm to be examined dr parmanand's medicines were not exposed to the air of shirdi and they remained intact but he had the good fortune of getting a darshan of baba bagoji was allowed to treat the hand daily after some days the arm healed and all were happy still we do not know whether any trace of pain was left or not every morning bhagoji went through his program of untying the bandages massaging the arm with ghee and tightly bandaging it again this went on till sai baba samadhi sai baba was a perfect siddha as he was and did not really want this treatment but out of love for his devotee he allowed the upasana service of bhagoji to go on uninterrupted all along when baba started for lendi bhagoji held an umbrella over him and accompanied him every morning when baba sat near the post close to the duni bhagoji was present and started his service bhagoji was a sinner in his past birth he was suffering from leprosy his fingers had shrunk his body was full of pus and smelling badly though outwardly he seemed so unfortunate he was really very lucky and happy for he was the premier servant of baba and got the benefit of his company master khapade's plague case i shall now relate another instance of baba's wonderful leela Mrs Khapade the wife of Mr Dada Saheb Khapade of Amravati was staying at Shirdi with her young son for some days one day the son got high fever which further developed into bubonic plague the mother was frightened and felt most uneasy she thought of leaving the place for Amravati and went near Baba in the evening when he was coming near the wada now Samadhi Mandir in his evening rounds for asking his permission 
she informed him in a trembling tone that her dear young son was down with plague baba spoke kindly and softly to her saying that the sky is beset with clouds but they will melt and pass off and everything will be smooth and clear so saying he lifted up his kafni up to the waist and showed to all present four fully developed bubos as big as eggs and added see how i have to suffer for my devotees their difficulties are mine seeing this unique and extraordinary deed the people were convinced as to how the saints suffer pains for their devotees the hearts of the saints is softer than wax it is soft in and out as butter they love their devotees without any idea of gain and regard them as their true relatives going to pandharpur i shall now close this chapter after relating a story illustrating how sai baba loved his devotees and anticipated their wishes and movements mr nana saheb chandrorkar who was a great devotee of baba was mamla tadar at nandarbar in khandesh he got an order of transfer to pandharpur his devotion to sai baba bore fruit as he got an order to go and stay in pandharpur which is regarded as the bhu vaikuntha heaven on the earth nana saheb had to take immediate charge so he left for the place without even writing or informing anybody at shirdi he wanted to give a surprise visit at shirdi his pandharpur see and salute his vitoba baba and then proceed further nobody knew of nana saheb's departure for shirdi but sai baba knew all about this as his eyes were everywhere as soon as nana saheb approached nimgaon a few miles from shirdi there was a stir in the masjid at shirdi baba was sitting and talking with mahalsa pati appa shinde and kashiram when he at once said let us all four do some bhajan the doors of pandari are open let us sing merrily then they began to sing in chorus the bhava of the song being i have to go to pandharpur and i have to stay on there for it is the house of my lord baba sang and the devotees followed him after a short while nana saheb came there with his family prostrated before baba and requested him to accompany them to pandharpur and stay there with them this solicitation was not necessary as the devotees told nana saheb that baba was already in the mood of going to pandharpur and staying there hearing this nana saheb was moved and fell at baba's feet then after getting baba's permission udi and blessings nana saheb left for pandharpur there is no end to baba's stories but let me now stop here reserving for the next chapter other topics such as importance of human life Baba's living on arms by Jabai's services and other stories bow to Shri Sai peace be to all